we've got um, to the point where Adam alayhi salatu salam he's in Jannah and Iblis has come to him and he's given him a waswasa or he's put thoughts in his mind that were not true and what he did was he made him believe in those thoughts because he said wallahi on top and he said by Allah I swear that this is the case that you will become from the people who live forever you will become like you know you become immortals you will become like the angels and what he had done is he had created a grounds for forgetfulness and at that moment when he had given the waswasa to um, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, both of them, because I think the biblical uh, story goes that it was Hawa, the woman, who was the one who then pulled the man in, and then the man is tempted by the woman to take from the tree. She takes it, he takes it, and then she has the original sin. So because of that original sin, Na'udhu Billah, her then um, punishment in a sense is that she gives birth. Every time she gives birth and the pain she goes through is because of the punishment that she, she uh, you know, she, she bore, uh, she, the sin that she bore in Jannah. Now that's horrible. To say, say the least, that's horrible. Uh, first is in Islam, we don't even believe that she was the first one that took from the tree. The Quran clearly states in Surah Al-A'raf, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَا both of them were given this, this waswasa of these whisperings of the shaitan. In Surah Baqarah, Allah says, فَأَكَلَا And in Surah Araf says, فَأَكَلَا Both of them ate from the tree. So there's no, pref- there's no precedence of one eating before the other. Uh, and on top of that, uh, if, the, if one did, let's say, for example, if it was the case that Hawa was the first one to eat from the tree, then what was the sin for all those women who came after? Why did they have to go through pain and punishment because of, of her? And even if it was Adam, you know, who was, who was the one who ate from the tree, then why is it that, you know, later on one man who is Jesus has to come for the redemption of sin of the whole of mankind? And it still doesn't make sense because, you know, I was in a debate once and I said, um, I was in a debate with a Christian and I said, you know, he, he, was, he was telling me how you know, what Christian beliefs are that I should try and convert to Christianity and so on. So well, it's his right to try and give da'wah and so on. It's my right to give da'wah towards my thing, yeah. So I said, look, if I convert now, yeah, what would be the difference? There would be no difference. He said, why wouldn't there be a difference? You'd get salvation, you'd get Jesus' love, and you would get, you know, uh, once you get his love and you get, his, you get salvation, you're able to sort of go to paradise or to heaven. So I said, look, did, did Jesus come for the redemption of man, for the sin, sin of man, or the original sin of man? He said, yes. He said, has he come already? He said, yes. I said, has he gone through what he had to go through for the redemption of, of the si- original sin of man? He said, yes. I said, well, then I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. All men have been forgiven through that. He said, no, but, you know, he did that, but you still have to believe in him to receive that. I said, you know, you're going in circles right now. You're going, so you said that he came for the redemption of the original sin of man and he did, you know, we don't believe that he was crucified, but they believe that he was crucified for that, for the redemption of that original sin. So now, it, you know, if you made the, the, the maths, the maths means that we we're all forgiven. So anyway, we don't believe in any of those encounters that um, Hawa was the first one to eat and that it was a sin, original sin and that it was inherited through every single human being until the day of judgment. We don't believe in that. We simply believe that this was a, f- a time of forgetfulness which shaitan orchestrated. And he, he pounded it up with a lot of thoughts of good, good things that would come about if they went to Nate from the tree. He also created the grounds that um, they really need to do this when there was actually a prohibition there. Forget prohibition, there was a want and a desire. From the want and desire, it became a need and necessity because of him saying that they would become two angels or they'd become immortal. On top of that, he sealed his waswasa with him saying, Wallahi, I'm telling you that this is the truth. Now, Adam al never heard anyone, Hawa never heard, alayhi salam, never heard anyone lie, let alone lie with the name of Allah, right? 
they, they, did not, they did not hear that before. So when you've never heard a lie before and you think everyone's, everyone must be telling the truth. And the next thing is, when you hear the name of Allah on top of that, Wallahi, this is the truth I'm telling you, then you, know, you believe in it, especially if you're a prophet, especially if you're of that level, you'd believe in it. So they believed in it. And they ate from the tree. Whatever it was, they ate from the tree. And when they ate from the tree, straight away what happened is, that the clothes vanished. Okay. Now the biblical uh, story goes that they were always in the original, you know, birthday suit of man, which is the birthday clothes of man, which is without any clothes. Right. <laughs> this is this is a total fallacy according to Quran. We don't believe that they were they they roamed around Jannah like that. No. We have got evidence in the Quran to say, and that Quran is that Musaddiqal Lima Bayneday. Quran will affirm to that which is there before it, and the Quran will point out the errors of the uh, errors which people have sort of fabricated themselves or made or misconstrued in the Bible after its original revelation. So, one of the things that people have changed in the original Bible is this thing that Adam and Hawa were two naked people. You know, this wasn't the case. Allah would have revealed in the, in the Torah and in the Injil that Adam alayhi salam, he was clothed. And it was only when he ate from the tree that they suddenly saw the clothes gone. So what did they do? The Quran then Surah Al-A'raf says, فَبَدَأَ يَخْصِفَ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ وَطَفِقَ يَخْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ This you will find in Surah Al-A'raf, ayah number 22 and ayah number 23. Where when he told them, he, he denoted something of, through deception. And when they tasted it from the tree, see the thing was the shaitan's whole thing is that just go on, just do it, just do it, just do it. And, and I want you to reflect on our lives where many of the times he's doing the same thing. His whole focus is he'll say anything he can just to make the person commit the sin. When they commit the sin, what went through Adam السلام, will go through any person of, of, of belief, which is you then have regret. You then feel remorse. You then are taken back. What have I just done? Because when they ate from the tree and they found themselves naked, that's when straight away they took the leaves or a couple of leaves of, the, of, of, of one of the trees nearby and they covered the aura with it. They covered their, you know, from, from the... You know, the, 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 the private parts with that. The Quran says that, that they covered themselves. This is in ayah number 22 and 23. Min jannah, from the leaves of Jannah. So what does this tell us? This tells us that there's no way a Nabi, a prophet would be in lewdness, in, in, you know, in a moral sort of manner, uh, in modesty, in Jannah. There's no way we would believe in that. Second thing is that now that he's lost his clothes, what's the first thing he does from his own wife? And a wife from her husband is to cover themselves. It's not only the wife and husband, obviously, the haya of Adam was also with Allah Azza wa Jal. Because they realized what they had done. They realized that Allah had, you know, everything flashed back. Everything flashed back. Allah said, you ate, you, you can eat anywhere you want from this whole Jannah, but you don't eat from this tree. So that came to mind. Ya Allah, you know, what have we done? We've just eaten from the forbidden tree and the clothes vanishing just, you know, gives them a clear sign from God that you've just done something really wrong. You, you've, just, you've just gone through my, you know, beyond my, my limit. So what we learn from this is that, okay, he had his regret. And straight away, Allah then, Allah then um, he then addressed both of them. He said, Alam anhakuma. Didn't I prevent both? Didn't I warn both of you and prevent you from this tree? Because what Allah had said now came to, oh my Allah. Allah had said, La taqraba hadi shatara. Don't even come near this tree. Allah did not say, don't eat from this tree. Allah said, don't come near this tree. And now Allah is talking to them and saying that, didn't I, did I forbid, you know, I, I forbid you from this tree? I come from come near, coming near to this tree? So this was now going through their minds. Ya Allah, you know, we have not only ate from the tree, but we should have listened to Allah's first command, which was not to even come near this tree. Uh, and didn't I tell you, inna shaitan lakuma aduwum mubin, that he is a, your clear enemy. Shaitan is your distinct, clear enemy. Didn't I tell you that? 
and they were filled they were filled with regret now the question you see one of the things that we analyze here is wasn't allah watching them commit that sin yes or no tell me yes he was watching them well let's not call it a sin let's call it a mistake because Laza said to you the the anbiya don't have any sin the anbiya don't have any sin and this was allah says himself in surah taha that i did not find any intention from adam alayhisalam to disobey me i did not find any intention that's clear in surah taha so that's why we don't say that this is a sin but let's call it a mistake when that mistake was happening, which would have been a sin in our case, because we're, you know, we're not on the level of the Anbiya, not the level of the, of the Prophets. Allah watched Adam, alayhi salam. He watched Hawa, alayhi salam. And he watched Shaitan coming and giving waswasa. He watched, the, he watched the delusion. He could have at any point intervened, but he didn't. He didn't intervene. Because, and from this we learn, that Allah will never intervene in many of our affairs. He may intervene. If he wants to, he may intervene. He may send a certain sign. Uh, and, and for them to suddenly, like for example, straight after that one thing Allah did is, when the regret came, the words that Adam needed to get his forgiveness, Allah gave him that. See, there's two things going on here. One is Allah doesn't intervene in, the, in him committing this mistake. But the second thing Allah does do is that He gives فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ This is in Surah Baqarah, if you look in the beginning. That suddenly Adam receives in his heart, he receives the words of رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُنَنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ That dua, he suddenly receives it now. He's never heard of this. He's never heard of it from anyone. He receives it in his heart and he feels that he needs to say these exact words to Allah to try and get forgiveness. Now Allah says in the Qur'an, you know, he received these words. Where would he receive it from? From Allah Azza wa himself. That he was given these words. So what does this teach us? This teaches us, and this comes to a hadith in Muslim, there's a hadith in Muslim that says, Lawla um, adnabtum, if you were a creation that wouldn't sin, if you were a creation that wouldn't sin, la khalaqallahu, then Allah would have created a new creation that would have sinned, a new creation that would have sinned, and then Allah would have got them to ask him for forgiveness, and upon that Allah would have forgave them. That's a hadith in Musahim Muslim. What does that mean? That means that not that you know we should now go with this license and say, yeah, yeah, you will be, you know, go and sin and say, Astaghfirullah, Allah, you love to forgive, so now forgive me. I can't get your forgiveness without you actually witnessing me sinning, so let me do it again. Woo! And then forgiveness, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You know, we're not gonna do that, but it shows that Allah Azza wa Jal He likes to forgive, and there's gonna be no way for him to forgive if there's nothing to forgive. Right? So one of the names of Allah Azza wa Jalla is Ghafoor, another one is Ghaffar, right? the oft forgiving, the one who loves to forgive. Another one is Afu, he, like, he loves to efface and erase you know, someone's past and so on. None of these qualities of Allah would be able to be manifest if there wasn't a creation or a creature of his that would be able to sin. So therefore, when he had the angels only, he wanted to create the jinns that would sin and that would ask for forgiveness and he wanted to create human beings that would do the same thing so there's a big lesson that we le learn from this so sometimes what happens is that we get to a stage and there are human beings who get to the stage that we've done something awfully wrong and we've directly disobeyed allah Azza wa Jal. but what we should do is we should not lose hope and we should remember that one of the first du'as that are used for the you know for the erasing of sin is the du'a of of Adam alayhi salam and Allah kept that dua for a reason that we would say the same thing when we sin. So this is one of the biggest duas of the Quran to get sins forgiven. Right? There's one in hadith, there's one in hadith and there's one in the Quran. The number one in the Quran is this dua here in Surah Al-A'raf, ayah number 22 and ayah number 23, you'll find it there. And the number one in hadith is Sayyidul Istighfar in Sahih Bukhari when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam said, you know, Sayyidul Istighfar, the best ways of seeking forgiveness from Allah is Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani, and, and so on, that, that whole, you know, 
wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdi wa wa'dik ma istata'tu a'udhu bika min sharri ma sarat wa abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu'u bi dhanbi faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa anta tastar but this one rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin now let's let's um, examine this there are many riwayats there are many narrations and weak narrations to say that adam alayhi salam was sent to the earth and then he was in a state of you know um, crying, he was a state of regret, he was a straight, he was in a state of roaming around the earth. First he couldn't find um, where Hawa was, and then they eventually met and they cried over their over their mistake and they cried and cried until they came to sort of um, Arafat, where Arafat is uh, near near Hajj place, and then they sought forgiveness there, and that's where he received his words, Rabbana Dalamna and Fusana. And that's when he said that. There are also narrations that are almost fabricated to say that he looked at the Arsh of Allah and he saw La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So then he said, you know, forgive me, you know, because of, you know, or through one of the great names, the great individuals that you, 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 you hold in esteem or something, Muhammad, who is this? And Allah said, how do you know who this is? And he says, well, I saw it on, on your arsh when you created me. So I said that and so on. This is almost like fabricated narration. So we don't need to take all of these. What I want to say to you is that him receiving these words were not on the earth from the text of the Quran. Why? Because when you look at the text of the Quran, Surah Araf, it shows that Adam salam, he had the regret with Hawa, they covered themselves up. Allah told them off, did I tell you, did I tell you this, not to come here, this? did I tell you that the shaitan is a clear enemy? And then he says, both of them said, Rabbana zalamna. And after that, Allah straight immediately in the next ayah, in ayah number 24, Allah says, Ihbitu ba'dukum li ba'd Come down all of you, some of you are enemies of others. So the coming down is after they're asking for forgiveness. Do you all understand that? Yeah. So in between is that, is, is that forgiveness. So he's still in Jannah when he's asking for that forgiveness. This is the whole point. So anyway, this is one crucial point that I, I, you know, I want you to say. Uh, I want you to remember. Second thing is, he immediately said, Rabbana Talamna, when he had his regret. He immediately said that. And what we learn from this is that whenever we do a mistake or we sin and so on, we should immediately seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. His words are, Rabbana, O oh, our sustainer, our Lord, our, the one who is our creator, sustainer, Lord, all these meanings are in Rabb, Rab, right? The one who is fed us, the one who, who looks after us, the one who clothed us, the one who gave us sustenance and, and keeps us going. All of these are in Rabbana. Rabb does, just doesn't mean Lord, okay? Zalamna and Fusana, we have wronged ourselves. We have wronged ourselves. Now in this part of the, of the dua, what he's admitting to is that the wrong is on himself. Now subhanAllah, there are, there are people there who sin and they start to question, well, why did God make me do this? You know, God saw me and so on. No, you admit to your wrong first because it was a rule that was said to you. You were in a state of forgetfulness, whatever it was. It is your mistake. And what Allah loves is for his servant to admit to his own mistake in front of him. Because Allah Azza wa is pure. وَإِلَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا And if you do not forgive us, وَتَرْحَمْنَا And if you do not have mercy on us, لَنَا كُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Surely both of us, me and Hawa, both of us will become from those who are losers, those who lose in the end. So the loss of yourself, myself, should be the focus that if Allah doesn't forgive us, we'll be at loss. But what's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is Allah, if Allah forgives us, then we save ourselves from the loss and we get salvation. Now, the, the toba of any one of us will require one of three or one of four things. I want to summarize it very quickly, right? Number, and this is what the ulama have said in, in you know, many of their, their works, Imam Nawi has recorded and so on. So I'm going to make it very sort of simple. Number one is you re have regret for what you've done. You have sincere regret for what you've done, Re regret. Number two is you, you completely, um, you completely, you know, um, pull yourself out from that sin, right? So you have intention, you have intention of not only having the regret, but you stop, you've stopped that, you stop that sin, you've regretted, and you have a clear intention to never go back to that sin again. 
right? You, know, you have a clear intention not to go back to the sin. So that's the third thing. So regret, pull yourself out, right? And a clear intention not to go back to that sin again. These are the three conditions that um, are, are, are needed for the Tawbah to be accepted for any sin. And number four is, if you owe anyone anything back, you give that back. So if the sin involved, you know, stealing, you have to give it back, the item, return the item back. If the sin involved you um, defaming somebody, you go uh, or insulting somebody, you go and ask for forgiveness. So this is returning back to an individual as only in the case when it involves another human being. So these four conditions or three conditions are needed for a person to get that you know, forgiveness from, from Allah Azza wa All three of them, of course, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam had. Now, when he had asked for his forgiveness, when he had asked for his forgiveness, Allah straight away said to him, He said, Ihbitu, come down. He said to him, to Hawa and to Iblis, He said, all three of you come down. Ba'adhukum li ba'adhin adu. He said, some of you are enemies of one another. Right? Now remember these words because there's a lot to analyze here. And again, in all the... I'm going to say stuff to you that you will possibly not even see in the normal tafsirs. Because you need to do this deep analysis and you need to... You know, it's open, the doors are open for people to look in the Qur'an and to say, well, you know what? There are, there are really deep meanings here that you know are not on the surface level so number no, the first one of the first things is that you see allah says some of you are enemies of one another now what what does enemy mean enemy is from an arabic word which is from ada ya'du ada ya'du means to go beyond and to go past um, a, a limit or to have a difference with another all right, so you have a difference with another in a way that you have a separation. You have a difference with another in a sense that you have a separation. Now, I could have a difference with you today, but I could be united with you tomorrow. And I could have a difference with you today, and I could have a difference with you tomorrow. There's two different things. Now, so if you almost look at this, so I'm here, you're here, our goals are one, but our means are different, right? We'll both get into the same goal, but our means are different. So we're different here at these two poles where my elbows are, but we're equal where my, where my fingers are, right? But you could be like this, you could be different like that. Where I'm different from the, the very start, and I'm also different from the very e at the very end. So it shows that our goals are different and our means are also different, okay? Now, why I'm saying this to you is, Adam, and Hawa alayhima salam, both of them with Iblis and Iblis with Adam and Hawa were like this, the second one. They were basically enemies of one another in the means of this world and the goals of the next world. They're enemies of one another in every aspect. That's why Allah says that your difference with Iblis is a clear difference. There's nothing that joins you up together. Nothing that joins you up, not even the goal or what you're trying to achieve in the end joins you up together. You're completely different. But what the ayah also means, because there's a try here, there's a try. There's a trial in the sense that it's not only Iblis and Adam and Hawa, it's Adam, Hawa and Iblis, there's three. So when Allah said, all of you are enemies of one another, who are the other two that are enemies of one another? It's Adam and Hawa alayhima salam. But here, the enmity is not like this. The enmity, is like that meaning it's not an enemy, that like both are enemies of one another. It means that you have got a difference between you two. There's a difference between you two, but... It's more like this. What do I mean by that? Meaning that you will also have differences between yourselves where you will not always get on. As in the man and the woman. You will always, you will always have a difference in how you're sort of you know, going on. However, your goals are one. So therefore, it's only a difference where the, where the two start points are, but it's not different where the end point is. There's a difference in the means, but not a difference in the end. Has everyone understood that?
Have you understood that part? So I'm going to now explain to you why I'm saying that. Because if you look in Surah at taghabun which is the 64th Surah of the Qur'an, you look halfway down, you will find or sort of three quarters way down, half or three quarters way down, you will see Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, Inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwal lakum. Allah says, aduwal lakum. He says that, O you who believe, some of your spouses, so it could be husbands and wives, and some of your children, they, they are adu, the same word used for an enemy. Adu wullakum. They are, they are an enemy to yourself. Now, it's not enemy there. Basically, that means they've got a clear difference to yourselves. So then Allah says, Fahdaruhum. Be careful of that. Be careful of that. What does Allah mean by that? It means that, like with me and my sort of wife, my wife, and then to me myself, there'll be clear things in life where both of us will not sort of always see eye to eye with things that we want to do and we want to sort of do and the means and so on will, will be sort of different. However, when it comes to the goals of what my wife wants to achieve, the akhirah, the goals of what I want to achieve, when it comes to us in terms of us being together, we are united in that. Do you understand? We are united in that. So what this means is that there will be two different, no, the enmity between or, or the difference between Iblis, Adam and Hawa there's one big, big difference between Iblis and mankind, which is Iblis wants to take mankind to Jahannam. Whereas the enmity between men, men and women, women and men and women, they, 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 they are there as well. And there's going to be kind of an enmity there. Now, that's one thing about the man and woman. But second thing is on the humanitarian level, there's going to be enmity between human beings. So when Allah said, بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ adu," Some of you enemies of one another. What the tafsir say, and he says, SubhanAllah, it's such a wonderful point is that until the day of judgment, the differences of mankind will never be resolved totally. You can do your best in curbing it. You can do your best in trying to say, okay, we're going to not sort of attack one another, which is a good thing. We're not going to fall out with one another. We're not going to argue with one another, but you can never do anything to eliminate the prejudice that lies within mankind. You can never do anything to totally eliminate that. That will not happen until the day of judgment. The difference between human beings that we've got, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has said uh, in a hadith of Abu Dawood, he said, Al arwahu junudun mujannada. He said, all all of, all of the human beings that Allah has created, they're like martial troops. If you imagine that this hall with the safs that we've got, you have in each single sort of uh, musalla, you have one person standing there all the way to the end. And if you imagine that right behind them on the musalla behind them, you have immediately one person standing behind them there. So you've got clear columns and you've got rows of people. He said, this is how all human beings are. So when you find one human being who's in alignment with another human being and his characteristics are similar, then they will sort of join and they will like one another. So either this way or that way, whichever way you want to look at it or diagonally you want to look at it. When there's a similarity with you and another human being, you kind of like them. When there's a dissimilarity with you and you know, with another human being, then you just will not. He said, Tanakarat. You will basically just move away from each other. There's positives and negatives in a magnet. The same way there's positives and negatives in human beings. Some human beings just get on with each other and there's other human beings that just don't get on with each other.